When you do research on calcium deposits in your body, you're going to see this word that comes up over and over and over. And that word is idiopathic. What does that word mean? It means unknown cause. There's a lot of unknowns about calcium deposits in your body, but today we're going to talk about what we do know and potential solutions to that. And I'm talking about bone spurs, kidney stones, osteophytes, which are just uh, like calcium projections from your joints, tartar in the teeth, calcium in the arteries, calcium that builds up in the brain or the breast tissue or your skin, or even on the eyes or on the nerves. What could be behind all this calcification on your tissues? If you had an injury, okay, or an infection, or some type of surgery or trauma, chances are you may have scar tissue. Chances are you have inflammation in that area that can develop calcium deposits in a joint from an old injury. A couple things that you should know. You need to keep the joint in motion. The more that you immobilize that joint, the more the calcium is going to start to fuse it. So motion is the answer to the buildup of calcium in your joints. Also, there's other things you can do, like things that will reduce inflammation, vitamin D, as well as omega-3 fatty acids. Now, the next factor that relates to calcium building up on your tissues is the pH. So normally your blood should be slightly alkaline. If the pH goes too high and becomes too alkaline, then you're going to have what's called alkalosis. And that's what I want to touch on. Calcium tends to come out of a solution in an alkaline environment, very similar to the spigot you have in your backyard. You may see calcium deposits on the receptacle if the pH of your water is too alkaline, if your cortisol is too high from years of chronic stress, or you've eaten a lot of sugar in your life. Those two things can bring you into a state of alkalosis. And what might happen after that is you might start developing calcium on the nerve tissue first, okay? And that can show up in tetany, twitching, like sometimes you have this little twitching underneath your left eyelid. That's kind of a sign of alkalosis. And this means that you need to acidify your body a little bit more. So apple cider vinegar would be a really good solution. Or start working on your stomach, like betaine hydrochloride. Your pH problem might come from maybe years of antacids or certain medications. But the real way to balance your pH is just to eat healthy and avoid things that are bad for you. And your body will come into the right pH it needs to be. And there's one product that also works great if you know you have a problem with alkalosis. And it's a standard process product called CalAmo. It has certain natural uh, compounds that acidify you. So it systemically acidifies your body and it's, it's really good for arthritis, alkalosis, calcium deposits. Number three, if you have high levels of calcium in your blood, it's called hypercalcemia, you could potentially get deposits of calcium through the body and it could show up as kidney stones as well. This could occur if you're consuming a lot of calcium supplements or if you're consuming a lot of milk and this calcium has nowhere to go. And so it starts to accumulate through the body. Now, another cause of this could potentially be uh, vitamin D toxicity, taking way too much vitamin D. But I want to just mention something about this. I've done a lot of videos on this. It's very rare to have that happen. And honestly, you'd have to be taking hundreds of thousands of international units of vitamin D for you to develop hypercalcemia. So for someone that has high calcium in their blood, I would really make sure that um, the person is not consuming too many dietary calcium supplements, if any at all. Number two, if they have any problem with the parathyroid gland, I would definitely increase vitamin D3. I wouldn't decrease it unless the person is taking a massive amount of vitamin D3 for many, many months, which is highly unlikely. The more likely cause would be something called hyperparathyroidism which I'm going to get to next. But I do want to mention uh, two last points on this hypercalcemia, this high calcium in your blood situation. When someone has cancer or a tumor, they can start having high levels of calcium in the blood, which that's going to be more rare. So I wouldn't necessarily look at that as the primary cause. I would first look at the dietary calcium situation and this uh, parathyroid problem that's actually just working too fast. So let's just touch on hyperparathyroidism, okay? You have four parathyroid glands, okay? And they're located around your thyroid gland, right? You can see it right here, the base of your neck, okay? And so the parathyroid 
regulates calcium. And when your vitamin D is low, okay, vitamin D has everything to do with helping you absorb calcium. It'll increase the absorption of calcium by 20 times, right? So if your vitamin D is low, like the majority of the population on planet Earth, well, then your parathyroid gland is going to have to work harder to look around for calcium. So it's going to look around and it's going to go into your bone and borrow calcium from the bone and grab it and bring it into the blood. And that can create a hypercalcemic, high calcium in the blood situation, which is interesting because we have uh, vitamin D at both spectrums, one at the high level and one at the low level, but indirectly causing the parathyroid to dump and release a lot of calcium from the bone into the blood. So that is the mechanism. So this is why if you have some calcium deposits, when you take vitamin D, okay, you may find that they improve. They might get better. They might go away. Why? Because then the parathyroid stops having to work so hard and it stops dumping all this calcium into the blood. Now, there's other reasons for this parathyroid gland to work excessively. Uh, it could be that you're taking lithium. Uh, that could be one side effect. It could be that you're taking diuretics. Diuretics can speed up your parathyroid. Or it could be you have a very small tumor on one of the glands that's causing it to work too fast. It's something to be aware of, and uh, it should be in your radar. You know, you can get it checked, get an ultrasound, see if there's a problem. And the good thing about the parathyroid glands is, let's say you have a, a small little benign tumor on one of the glands. Well, guess what? You got four. So you have some spares. The best way to deal with this is to start taking more vitamin D3. Now let's talk about another reason why you might have deposits. And this has to do with low phosphorus. Phosphorus is in a lot of our different foods, but more in animal products than other products. And we need phosphorus for our DNA, for our energy, for ATP. 85% of all the phosphorus is in our bones, so it helps to make the bones very strong. And phosphorus works with calcium too. It also works with vitamin D. And so when the phosphorus is low in the body, now we have a lot of free calcium that is free to do whatever it wants to do. And it can actually start accumulating on different tissues, can accumulate anywhere. So by adding more of this phosphorus, you could potentially dissolve some of these calcium deposits because it keeps the calcium in check. And the type of phosphorus that I'm gonna recommend is from uh, a company, Standard Process. I recommend them a lot. I, I have no affiliation, no kickbacks or anything like that. There's a product called Fast Food Liquid. Works great on calcium deposits. I used to use it in practice. And uh, there's a whole series of other symptoms related to low phosphorus that you can identify. And the last reason why you might have uh, calcium deposits is biofilm. Now, what are biofilms? Biofilms are little small igloos that microbes make to hide from you. And so they can go underneath the radar. And it's kind of like a community of microbes that have band together to survive. And this is why antibiotics don't kill biofilms. You can have biofilms as tartar on your teeth. You can have biofilms in your arteries as placking on the arteries. You can also have biofilms in your joints. Now, vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 works with vitamin D3. K2 directs the calcium to go into the bone. So that way, it works with vitamin D. Vitamin D brings it into the blood. K2 takes it from the blood into the bone to make your bone really solid. So if you're lacking vitamin K2, you could potentially start having all sorts of deposits. And vitamin K2 is in hard cheeses, soft cheeses. It's in butter, eggs, and uh, even uh, sauerkraut. I forgot to mention one last point. Magnesium helps to reduce the calcium deposits. Uh, magnesium comes from leafy greens. If you're doing a lot of leafy greens, you don't have to worry about getting enough potassium. You can also get potassium from uh, electrolyte powder, things like that. But potassium also helps to regulate this calcium excess problem, but it's not probably the biggest common reason why you have calcium deposits. So I didn't emphasize it. So I've given you a series of things to look at, to identify, to see potentially what could be your problem. But I would like you to learn a little bit more about this vitamin K2. And if you have not seen this video right here, check it out.